Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In today's video, we are going to be talking about homogeneous transformations for 3D robots. In our previous videos, in the Robotics 101 series, we have talked about homogeneous transformations for 2D robots. So if you haven't watched those, I would recommend starting with the 2D robots first and then coming to the 3D robots. Because almost all the concepts are the same, it is just a notch up. That being said, I'm going to try and explain it in such a way that even if you haven't watched those, you can still make sense of it. So in my previous two videos in the Robotics 201 series, we have talked about something called a rotation matrix. So we are going to start from there. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is called coordinate transformations. And what that means is it is how you express one coordinate frame with respect to another coordinate frame. So let's say if I have a coordinate system, which is this one, and it is a fixed coordinate system as represented by these marks. So it is a fixed coordinate system. So I can just write F to make sure to imply that it is a fixed coordinate system. And then I have a moving coordinate system or a moving reference frame, which is this. And I can just uh, imply that it is a moving reference frame with the letter M. So this is the moving reference frame, this is the fixed reference frame. So the question is, how do I express the moving reference frame with respect to the fixed reference frame? That is what coordinate transformations is. You express one coordinate system with respect to another coordinate system. But before we get into how we do that, we need to understand why do we need to um, do all the HESI and do coordinate transformations in the first place, right? So in order to understand that, let's say I have a robot, which let me draw something out. Uh, my ro my drawing isn't that good, but let me try my best. So I have a robot which has a base which can rotate about this. And then there is another, another joint here, which can rotate about this. And it is connected to another um, joint, which is that's called a prismatic joint and which is connected to the, the gripper or the end effect. So what I've done is I have, uh, so what I've done is I have fixed the fixed reference frame at the base of the robot and the moving reference frame at the end effect of the robot. So that is why I need to do coordinate transformations to be able to identify where my end effector is at any given time. Hope that makes sense. So, how do I do it? So first and foremost, you can see that in order to go from the fixed reference frame to the moving reference frame, you need to do some translation, right? And for this case, you need to translate first about X by A units, then by B units in Y and by C units in Z as represented by this displacement vector. So you first displace the fixed frame by this displacement vector to get to this point. However, notice that even once you reach this point, your orientation is not aligned with the moving frame, right? So you need to do a rotation in order to get your orientation aligned with the moving frame. For this case, if I can just quickly see that what would happen is once I do the, the displacement, what I would get is I would probably get my Z axis would be aligned with the Z axis. My X axis would be here right so what i would do is i would then need to do a positive rotation about the z-axis by whatever this angle is so theta in order to get this align and what that would mean is that would ensure that my moving frame is now expressed with respect to the fixed frame so you see that there are two things that i need one is a displacement vector and the other is a rotation which we normally represent by the letter A, which is called a rotation matrix. So there's a rotation matrix and there's a displacement vector. Now, let's say I have a point X, which is expressed in the moving frame. So let's say there is an object that the robot needs to grab and we know the position of the object with, with respect to the end effector. So which is a small X. Now we need to figure out 
the position of that same object with respect to the base of the robot, with respect to the fixed frame. So I have marked this with capital X. And that is often the case that we need to do. We need to find out the position of one object with respect to two different frames, with respect to the base of the robot, with respect to the end effector of the robot, and sometimes even with respect to the end of the room or something. So when talking about a point with with respect to the moving frame, we use small letters. When talking about a point with respect to the fixed frame, we use capital letters. That is just a convention. So how do we express the same point? Expressing the moving frame to the fixed frame. So the way is very, very simple. This is what coordinate transformations is. So what you do is you use this equation right here, which is big X equals to the rotation matrix times the small x plus d. So this is the equation that we use, but what does this equation mean? Let us try and dissect this equation a bit. So first and foremost, you can see if you look at the second term here, you can see that what you are doing is you are first displacing it by the displacement vector, which makes sense, which is what we did. Initially, we displaced the fixed frame by the displacement vector, and then you are multiplying the rotation matrix with the point. So you multiply the rotation matrix with the point and which gives you the same point expressed in the fixed frame. Hope that makes intuitive sense. And it, the way that you read this is you first translate the frame by the displacement vector and then you ro rotate it. So it's reading from right to left. And the displacement vector is just a vector which is three cross one and the rotation matrix is a three cross three vector. And we have talked a great deal about the rotation matrix in our previous video. So the rotation matrix is a three cross three vector. The displacement vector is a three cross one vector. And this is what coordinate transformation is. So you are expressing a point in, with respect to one coordinate system, like a point defined with respect to one coordinate system. And you are expressing it with respect to one of the coordinate systems. So coordinate transformations. Now, now I've read it in this equation and what, what we do often is we do not want to have two separate entities that we have to multiply, that we have to add and get the point. What we do is we combine all of this into one matrix. So the way we do it is we make this matrix, which is a four cross four matrix and on the top left side we keep the rotation matrix so it is a 3 cross 3 matrix and at the bottom of this matrix we have three we keep three zeros that is always the case and on the right side we keep the displacement vector which is a 3 cross 1 vector and at the bottom we keep a 1 so it's just combining the rotation matrix and the displacement vector together and for the bottom row we just use three zeros and a 1 so now we have a four cross one matrix and we multiply it by small x and we get the capital X. But wait, if this is a four cross one mat matrix, then this cannot be a three cross one vector, right? Because it cannot be multiplied. And yes, that is exactly the case. So when we are using this specific form, which is when we have combined the rotation matrix and the displacement vector into one single matrix. so when we are using the same equation, what we do is instead of just using the small x and the big X, which is a three cross one vector, we keep a one at the end of both of these. So the small x would be just x, y, z coordinates followed by a one and the big X would be x, y, z coordinates followed by a one. So the one is always going to be there. And when we do this, we call this to be the homogeneous point like the the point expressed in the homogeneous form so this small x is going to be the a point expressed in the homogeneous form with respect to the moving frame and the big x is going to be a point expressed in the fixed frame which is in the homogeneous form and this big matrix that we have just made the four cross four matrix this is what we call a homogeneous transformation or a homogeneous matrix homogeneous transformation matrix
So what a homogeneous transformation matrix does is it enables us to do coordinate transformations. That is all that it does. So, so I've written it in the short form x equals to h times small x, where h is my homogeneous transformation matrix. And once again, this x is not just the x, y, z coordinates in the moving frame, it is the x, y, z coordinates. So it is the x, y, z coordinates and a one at the end. The one is always going to be there. And this is going to be the x, y, z coordinates in the fixed frame followed by a one. And why do we have that one again? Because of the way that we constructed the homogeneous transformation matrix, because we had to add one extra row in order to make it a four cross four matrix. So that is what we did. And if you look at this again, and if I just quickly multiply it out, you can see that I would get the equation on the top. So if I multiply it out, I get a times x, uh, a times x, which is this part. I'm just considering x to be this part and then d times one. So I get this. So you see that this is the same as this, right? where this has a one at the end and this does not have a one at the end. So now the question is, why do we bother with all of this in the world of robotics? So before we talk about why we do it and specifically for the world of robotics, let me tell you one very important and very nice property of using homogeneous transformations. So let's say if I have a fixed frame here and there's a moving frame here and there's another moving frame here. And the thing is that I know the homogeneous transformation that takes this to the first moving frame and another homogeneous transformation that takes this moving frame to this moving frame. So this is what I mean. So H1 is my first homogeneous transformation and H2 is my second homogeneous transformation. Now, if I need to figure out the homogeneous transformation that takes the fixed frame directly to this, right? I need to find out this. So the process is very simple. All you need to do is you need to multiply the successive homogeneous transformations in this manner and you get the final homogeneous transformation. And this applies no matter how many homogeneous transformations you have. So once again, so what we are doing is we have two moving frames and the first moving frame is expressed with respect to the fixed frame. The second moving frame is expressed with respect to the first moving frame. And we know the homogeneous transformations. So we just multiply the successive homogeneous transformations and we, what we get is another homogeneous transformation matrix, which is going to be a four cross four matrix, which again would have the property that it would, uh, it would be of this form where this, there would be a rotation matrix three cross three. There would be three zeros, there would be a displacement vector, and then, then there's going to be a one. And this displacement vector D is what would take this point right here to this point right here directly. And this rotation is what would, like the rotation that you would need to do after taking this frame to this uh, point in this manner, the rotation that you need to perform in order to get it aligned with the moving frame. And now, if let's say I have a point which is defined with respect to my second moving frame, let me erase this out first. So let's say if I have a point, a small x, which is defined with respect to this moving frame, and I need to find the same point with respect to the fixed moving frame, all I need to do is I need to use this equation x equals to x times x. And you get the answer. And similarly, there are times when you do not know the location of an object with respect to the end factor, rather you know the location of, an, of the object with respect to the base of the robot. So all you would need to do is you would use the same equation, but what you would do is you were, so what you are going to find is the small x, which is the point expressed in the end factor frame or the moving frame. So you just take the homogeneous transformation matrix to the other side, you take the inverse and you get this. And now you input, so the big X is the coordinates of the object with respect to the base of the robot and the small x is the 
coordinates of the object with respect to the end effect. We are going to deal with specific cases and we are going to work through a few numerical examples in the future couple of videos. But for now, I would I do want to leave you with uh, a better understanding of what we have done. So let's say I have a robot here, which is a, a normal 3D robot, which has a revenue joint here, a revenue joint here, a revenue joint here, right? And now we have two uh, reference frame. The first is, let's say the first is this one. Let me use another color. Okay, so the first is this one. So uh, this is my fixed frame, which is at the base of the robot. And then I have another uh, frame, which is the moving frame. Let's say I have the moving frame, this, this, and this. Okay, so this is my moving frame and this is my fixed frame. And now I need to figure out the homogeneous transformation that takes the fixed frame to the moving frame. So what I would do is first and foremost, I would figure out the homogeneous transformation that takes this fixed frame to this um, joint. So I call it as H1. And then I need to figure out the homogeneous transformation that takes this frame to this point H2. And once I get H1 and H2, I can just simply find H which my edge is this, which takes the fixed frame directly to the moving frame. So my edge is going to be equal to the first homogeneous transform multiplied by the second homogeneous transform. And once again, this edge is going to be of the of this form A, and then there are going to be three zeros. So I can shorten them up by writing this zero vector transform, and there's going to be a displacement vector and then there's going to be a one. And this displacement vector right here, what this would give me is the location of the end factor, which is this point, the location of the end factor in the fixed frame. And that is often what we want, right? We want the, so this is the location of end factor in the fixed frame in F. And this gives me the orientation of the end effector in the fixed frame. So that was all for this video. Um, this video was surprisingly longer than I expected it to be, but I just wanted to build a good base before we move on. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified when I upload the next videos, which are going to be very interesting in this series. And as always, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.